Closed captioning for the Let's Dine Out show provided by Holiday Cafe, your neighborhood diner with two locations in Ontario and Mr. D's Diner in Laverne. Ready to satisfy your hunger and budget? Let's Dine Out is made possible by support from Food for Life Baking Company, makers of over 60 organic, all-natural sprouted baked goods, as well as gluten-free and vegan products. Food for Life Baking Company, dedicated to better health since 1964. Foodforlife.com. Sanborn's Air Conditioning and Heating, providing installation, maintenance, and repair of heating and air conditioning systems for home and businesses throughout the Inland Empire. Sanborn's Air Conditioning and Heating, five-star comfort for four generations. Sanbornsac.com. And viewers like you, supporting local public television. Thank you. I'm food critic Alan Borgen, member of the Southern California Restaurant Riders. I've been finding the best restaurants in the Inland Empire and Southern California for over 27 years. This is my job. This is my passion. Let's dine out. Hi, I'm food critic Alan Borgen. And I'm Trisha Jansen. Welcome to another delicious edition of the Let's Dine Out Show, where we sacrifice our waistline and show you some of the best restaurants in Southern California. Speaking of waistlines, Alan, I hear you're going to the gym. Yes, I admit, I'm going to the gym. You've gone to the dark side. It, yeah, I feel like it's been a year. It's only been three times, but so far, so good. I'm really proud of you. But en enough about exercise. That's food, please. Let's talk food. All right, food. First, we're off to Lake Forest for a wonderful Italian family restaurant called Papino's. Then, we travel to Anaheim Hills for some delicious Middle Eastern food at Rosine's, an upscale Mediterranean restaurant you won't want to miss. Since 1984, Papino's Italian Family Restaurant in Lake Forest is a popular New York style eatery that your entire family will enjoy. The dining room features an assortment of family and celebrity photographs on the walls, giving the restaurant a real sense of community, while the exciting menu is sure to take you on a delicious culinary journey throughout southern Italy. With recipes handed down from generations to generations, you know owner Joseph Muscatello and his friendly staff put a lot of love in their food preparation and treat their loyal customers like family. You know, Tricia, you've been bugging me, literally bugging me, yes. from the day that you found out you were going to be my post to come to this restaurant. I and know. You know something? I'm glad I listened to you. You listen to me. I love I it. I always listen to you. You know, Alan, I've been eating here since I was 17 years old. So that was like, what, two, three years ago? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's jump into it and see I'm if you're right. I'm ready. Okay, first dish you tried was a sausage Ferenzano, $17.95. This is sliced Italian sausage sautéed with fresh garlic, onions, and a red Marsala wine marinara sauce, Romano cheese, and, and cheese stuffed tortellini. It's tri-colored. Very, very nice dish. Now the sausage is really neat. It's his own family recipe. Someone else makes it off the grounds, but it's his own family style you know, sausage. It's loaded with fennel. And just a combination of everything. Well, it's so nice, it's a tortellini. It's got a Dante, it's, it's tastes fresh as if they made it here. And just the whole dish really worked. I would agree. I'm not a huge fan of sausage. We always talk about that. But this dish to me had everything. It was, I want to just call it, I, I say this all the time, cheese love. The sauce, the way they uh, sauteed everything and then they tossed the cheese in it and then it melted in there. It was creamy. It was rich. I love this. Good stuff. Yeah. And then next we had the ribeye Florentine, $26.95. This was amazing. This was a 12 ounce ribeye steak grilled. Seasoned and topped with grilled onions, mushrooms, and it had melted blue cheese, crumb, blue cheese crumbles on it. Served with cream spinach on a bed of creamy rigatoni. This was amazing. Um, I love the saltiness of the blue cheese crumble on top. It had that earthiness from the mushroom. This was like the epitome of the best steak. What did you think? It was very, very good. You know, ribeye, I mean, you can't go wrong with ribeye. 
my only complaint against ribeyes is a little fatty. And I got, of course, the first chunk I had was a fat, but that, <laughs> that comes with the territory. But no, the steak was excellent, perfectly prepared. And the proportions, that's one thing about this restaurant, huge. they're not chintzy. Yeah, huge portions. Um, and again, the pasta, the spinach uh, gave it a very bright flavor, and it was on a very creamy, I don't know if it was just a butter, like a fettuccine, but a very, very light, uh, or not fettuccine, an Alfredo sauce. It just had a very great flavor to it. Very good. A nice accompaniment to the steak. Then, the veal Sorrentino 1995. Now, you don't see veal too often, no. but it's mostly it's because it's a little expensive. Right. But they, again, they're not chintzy here. No. This is eight ounces. It's cut up into five medallions. Yes. They pound the heck out of it, so it's nice and thin. <laughs> and it's sautéed with mushrooms, onions, bacon, keyword bacon, mm -hmm. black, uh, black olives with a creamy Marcella wine sauce. Then it's baked with mozzarella cheese, and you get a side of spaghetti and, and uh, meat sauce. Delicious. As usual, you know, Veal is tender, yeah. but this was amazing, and what I really did it was the bacon. That bacon really brought I it to... I really converted well, you to bacon. bacon. No, but bacon really made this dish I agree. different than anybody else I've ever had it with. I agree. This was amazing. First of all, the veal was so tender. So often the veal is very chewy. It can find. be. This is a milk-fed veal. It's very tender, pork tender, if you will. That smoky bacon, the flavors together. Oh my gosh, I went in for a bite and I think I had about five or six. Next, we had breaded shrimp parmesan, $22.95. This was five huge jumbo butterfly shrimp that were panko crusted and deep fried. And then he sauteed uh, a red wine sauce with uh, over linguine with melted uh, mozzarella cheese. This was delicious. What did you think? I've never ever seen this in any restaurant. I thought it was delicious. I, I love shrimp. This is succulent. I love the panko, you know, it's, it's real crisp. crispy. It was crispy. Yeah, just a very, it was a stunning dish. Very, yeah. very nice. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of shrimp. I like it. Uh, I'm a huge fan of chicken parmesan, eggplant parmesan, you name it. But this is a nice take to it because you never, yeah. see, I've never seen this in any restaurant. Yeah, and if you're a seafood lover, I think you'll really like this. Speaking of seafood, pescatori, $24.95. It's a huge portion of um, linguine, and all on top and around it, you've got fresh clams, two types of mussels, fresh halibut, jumbo shrimp, calamari, king crab, sauteed with garlic, red or white wine. We had the white wine yes. sauce served again over linguine. Nice presentation, great seafood. Um, I love the freshness of everything. Again, I'm not a huge seafood lover, but I thought that this dish had a, a very light flavor and it allowed the seafood to come through. Right. So um, I liked it. I thought it was very good. Coming from you, that's good. I know, right? That's a good thing. Next, we had the pasta toscana, $13.95. This was just, oh, yum. This was um, sauteed capicola and onion and Romano cheese and a light red creamy masala sauce. To me, this just had a really great flavor. It was creamy, it was it had a little bit of a kick to it in, in some ways, but I thought chicken would have been a good addition to it. What did you think? Yeah, it needed something, and I, I thought chicken's a little more texture to it. Yeah, it just needed a little something. Yeah, charge an extra couple dollars or something. Yeah, we did, however, get a side of meatballs of this because I'm a meatball fan, and I have to say, uh, Pepino's meatballs are one of my very favorite meatballs. So for $4.95, you can get two really large meatballs, and these are uh, an 80-20 blend and with uh, fresh soaked bread, eggs, Parmesan, che uh, Parmesan cheese blend, and fresh parsley. These meatballs are amazing. That's nice. It wasn't too dense. It wasn't mushy. They were perfect. It's just perfect. They're perfect. And the next dish we had was Pepino bread, $8.95. You know, Alan, this is a dish I remember having, I think, I'm not even going to say I how many years ago. over and over Pepino and over. bread, Pepino bread. This, I don't know why it's so fabulous to me, but it, it, the flavors are so great. This is a pizza dough, and they spread garlic butter on it, and then they put pepperoni and mozzarella cheese, and they roll it up, and then they bake it, and they top it with some more cheese. And of course, they serve it with either a marinara or a meat sauce. And they cut it open, and I'm telling you, this is like the epitome of comfort food. It's gooey, it's salty, it's... Well, it's crispy on the outside, yeah. which I, it's very important. And I love the sauce, the meat sauce. To me, it's a little sweeter yeah. than the other sauces they serve here. And just a perfect combination, it really goes well. Yeah, this is something I could eat 24-7 and be really happy, although I'd be huge. But, <laughs> but happy. But happy. Yeah, it's cheese, it's pepperoni, it's that sweet sauce. I mean, really, all goes together well. it all goes together so well. Right. I highly recommend that. Now, if you go to Italian restaurants, you got to get pizza, and they have some great pizzas here. We had the large New York Works-style uh, pizza, $17.95. This is a very, very large pizza. Yeah. It was a medium thick, a medium thin crust, I right. should say. It wasn't real thin, it wasn't real thick. Right. Kind of in the middle, yeah. the pepperoni, Italian sausage, 
green peppers, onions, black olives, mushrooms, mozzarella cheese. Uh, what I liked about it was the, the dough. It had a nice crunch to it. And it just the flavors really, really turned out nice. And it's just a nice combination. It's simple. And that's one thing about this restaurant. They don't go, it's not a food food restaurant. They really, it's just down to earth family Good tradition. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I wanted you to review this because you're the pizza king. So yeah. I was waiting for you. I know I already, already know I like the pizza, but I wanted to see what you thought. And you're picking up the crust and you're feeling it and it held up and you're like, oh, this is a good crust. Yeah, I know. It's very good. Yeah. I mean, I think we're both in agreement. We love a real thin, crispy crust. And right. I know that uh, Joe does do a real thin crust. You can tell. You want it thin, yeah. he'll make it for you. So. Yeah. But this was a perfect medium crust. Then we had a couple desserts. Yes. Oh my gosh. The cannoli. Five seventy five. This is handmade here. This is amazing. Marscapone cheese and ricotta, chocolate chips, powdered sugar, and then it's served beautifully with a drizzle of chocolate and the chocolate jimmies on it and uh, powdered sugar. And when you said made here, the, the whole shell, everything, everything is, is yeah. made here. This is an authentic cannoli, which is almost nearly impossible to find in Southern California, in my opinion. Now, they also wanted to know that they would make their own um, buffalo mozzarella cheese. Yes. They make that here on a lot of the dishes. And um, so they try to make as much as they can here. Pasta is kind of labor intensive, so they really don't make that here. Right. But it's made fresh for them. Now, our other dessert was very special because I had to order it. But Joe, the owner, you know, he said, you got to try this. It's chicken marsala, $17.95. And you never argue with Italians, so we ordered it. But this is a uh, eight ounce breast of chicken that they pound. So it becomes a lot bigger, actually. Yeah. And it's sauteed with mushrooms, onions, in a, in a beer, in a beef stock butter Marcella wine sauce and it was served with a side of spaghetti with their meat sauce and very very nice rendition lots of mushrooms which is a really good thing the butter just has a nice finish to it and if you like Marcella wine which I do yes. it's a real nice nice type of wine it's all alcohol is all burned off so not to worry about it right but it's a very unique flavor and very very good dish what were your favorites you know, I had a hard time nailing it down because I like everything. I would say the sausage far Farenzano. I love that. It was cheesy. It was just, oh, I loved it. And, I, and for me to say I love a sausage dish is crazy, but I did. I, I mean, that was the first thing we ate, and I think we sat there and kept, kept picking at it. Um, next, I'm going to say the veal Sarantano, uh, Sarantino. I love that. It had a great smoky flavor, that bacon. I have to have a bacon dish in there. And, oh, eeny, meeny, miny, moe. I'm going to say the pepino bread, just because it's my history. I love that pepino bread. If you had nothing else, and if they had a stand on the side of the road and just sold pepino bread, they would be millionaires. Maybe they should name it the Trisha bread. I know, right? It's That's just, it. I love it. So good. Well, my favorites are a little close. Uh, veal Sorrentino, I really like that dish. It was just a nice combination of all the ingredients. Right. I also like the breaded shrimp uh, parmigiana. Very, very different. Yeah. I've never seen that anywhere. I know it's yeah, and it works. It's really, really, yeah. really good. I agree. And my third choice, if I had to choose three only, the pizza. Really nice pizza. I like the crust. It stood up to all the ingredients. They weren't, you know, chintzy with the ingredients. Right. And again, that's a theme to the whole restaurant. You get value here. Yep. Just quality food, and again, you feel like family, which is a good thing. For you to say that you like the pizza, that is a huge compliment to Pepino's because uh, we all know that you're a pizza judge at the Pizza Expo, and that is the one thing. Every time we go to taste somewhere, if there's pizza, I'm always like, oh, here we go. Alan's going to do his pizza taste test. So that's a huge compliment that you like their pizza. Well, like that's I said, great. You always accuse me of not listening to you. I listened to you. I'm glad I did. Well, let's pack this up and head off to Anaheim Mills to Rosine's and try some Mediterranean cuisine. Sounds good. Located in Anaheim Hills, Rosine's Mediterranean Restaurant is a beautifully decorated restaurant with modern details and finishes, including a gorgeous bar, a stunning wine case with an extensive wine list. Mama Rosine and her staff use only fresh ingredients in their dishes that are inspired from her Syrian and Lebanese family roots, while her eldest son Hagop's passion for wine pairings makes this upscale Mediterranean restaurant an eatery that you must experience. Well, we finally made it here. Thank God for toll roads. Yes. I love it. A couple of dollars. Well, well definitely worth, worth it. it. Definitely. Now, this is a restaurant I'm very familiar with. For, they had a location, a satellite location in uh, Corona. Right. And unfortunately, it just didn't make it. I think if they went there now, it would be thriving. It would that's, be huge. I'm very good with other people's money. 
<laughs> but uh, but here at Anaheim Hills is their first location. It's a beautiful uh, location. Nice, nice people here. And, yeah. Uh, and it's it's centrally located, so even for those of us in the IE, it's not far to drive. Well, let's start with the first dish. Absolutely. There's a chilled mesa. This is fifteen dollars and fifty cents. This is a combination plate, kind of all little appetizers. Yeah. The first one was hummus. Everyone knows about hummus. Puri garbanzo beans with tahina sauce, which is uh, sesame paste. Yep. Uh, lemon, olive, and olive oil. Simple but delicious. Delicious. Then had tabbouleh. This is one of my favorites. It's chopped parsley, onions, tomatoes, some bulgur wheat. Uh, onion, some mint, olive oil, and lemon. Then there's baba ghanoush, mm. the best. Yeah. This is a fire roasted eggplant with tahina and olive oil. Absolutely delicious. Put on pita bread. You're in heaven. Absolutely. Next there was muhamara. That's a tough one. This is walnut caviar. It's chopped walnuts, pomegranate, uh, red chili with pepper paste, olive oil, breadcrumbs. And what's nice about this, it's real dense. It it's is. got some heat to it. Mm -hmm. And the Middle Eastern food you usually don't find much heat. Right. This one had it. That dish to me is decadent. That's the only word I can think of. It's sweet, it's salty, it's savory, and it has that kick, kick at the end. I, I love it. I mean, there's nothing, I've never tasted anything like it before. I absolutely highly recommend so getting once that. So you, once you get past the name, <laughs> You don't have to pronounce it, well, then it's good. you can call it the walnut Wana caviar. caviar or pate. Then they had sarma, which is two rolled grape leaves mm -hmm. with herb, rice, and uh, toasted onions. Yes. Very good. And uh, then they had the pickled relish, those bright purplish uh, relishes yeah. they have. And there's a nice beginning. I think it's something you can share with people, and it just gets you going. Now that's the cold plate. Right. Now we have the hot plate. We have the hot one. I had the hot meza, 1750. This again, like the cold one, is is a must when you come here. They have the cheeseburg and the meatburg. Now the cheese one, think of a, a cheese pastry filled with love. I mean, this is just it's jack cheese, it's onion, parsley, and herbs in this encasement of love. Like that's all I can say. This was pastry. so good. A pastry is so good. The meat one is equally as delicious. It's lamb and beef with herbs, and then it has a, a whole pine nut in it, which is interesting. Gives a crunch. Both of those are so so delicious. The flavors are just so good, and they're very comforting. It's comfort food. Mm -hmm. You know, it's crunchy and salty and sweet. Then they had kebe which is um, the bulgur wheat and pine nuts, and it has beef and lamb in it as well, and it's also deep fried, but it's a ball. Very good, has a great flavor. And then falafel, everybody I think pretty much knows about uh, falafel. falafel. It's great, garbanzo beans, onions, garlic, cumin, that cumin flavor really comes through. Lots of herbs, the coriander. And then of course she has all the little the little tasting dishes, the, the dips, the um, the tahini, mm. and then she does, a, sometimes you can get garlic if you want it, or the uh, hummus. And these are just, every single one, I, I can't say that one is better than the other, I keep tasting them. No, I like that one. No, I like that one better. They're all so good. Well, it's, a great, it's a great dish to have, you know, it's an appetizer. It's just a nice beginning. Yeah, for sure. Now let's get into the big boys here. Yes. The lamb shank. This is twenty-seven ninety-five. This is about a pound and a half mm -hmm. lamb shank that's seared in its own fat, mm. slowly cooked with red wine, mm. garlic, rosemary, onion, and lots more garlic. And uh, it takes about three and a half hours yeah. to make this. So it just is tender and juicy. Absorbs all the liquid. Yes. It's served with your choice of either mashed potatoes or uh, stewed green beans. And then it comes with, uh, which is made with tomatoes, onions, mm -hmm. garlic, and an au jus gravy. I love lamb. I love this dish. Very moist, very juicy, a little fat to give it that nice mm -hmm. lamby flavor. <laughs> and it's just a great, great dish. I agree. This to me is a Middle Eastern kind of down home country cooking type dish. It's like what you would expect Sunday on the farm, you know? And the green beans with the stewed tomatoes and the garlic, mm. the flavors, I mean, they've, they've just been stewing in that all day and they're just delicious. I also love the flavor profile with the rosemary and just very simple flavors, but just really, really well done. I agree. Uh, we agree. We agree. Shocking. Next, we have the porterhouse, the pork porterhouse. This was $21.95. This was a 16 ounce bone-in pork chop. This is like the Fred Flintstone portion, <laughs> huge. Um, it's grilled perfectly and it comes with a, a sweet balsamic reduction. We had mashed potatoes and then a grilled vegetable kebab. You know, what can I say about it? It was perfectly cooked, the pork. Um, I like the balsamic reduction because the sweetness of that balsamic really pairs well with the pork. Mm -hmm. You know, that salty sweet combination, but not overdone. It's just, it's very subtle. And then I love the char on the vegetables for the kebab. I mean, who doesn't love a grilled kebab, veggie kebab? What impressed me was, you know, porterhouse steak is usually a beef steak. No, right. this is not. This 
is from pork. This is pork. And you, I don't think I've ever seen it in a restaurant, and it's a delicious cut of meat. It is, and it's huge. You like huge. <laughs> Speaking of huge, yes. the next plate. Yes. This is the Ultimate Kebabs, thirty-six ninety-five. This is a f uh, four skewer, five skewers actually. Yeah. One is beef tenderloin steak. Next one is uh, leg of lamb chunks. Then we have lule, which is kind of like kofta, it's beef and lamb, kind of like a burger mm -hmm. type meat. Um, then the, we had chicken kebab, and then a, a nice kebab of grilled veggies. Yeah. And it was topped with uh, onions and the sumac and parsley on top. I thought it was excellent. The different flavors mm -hmm. you get, this is enough for two people easily. Easily. And you get, we, this came with mashed potatoes, and we got right, uh, wheat peel off on that one. Yeah. And it comes with hummus and the spicy aioli. Um, just so a nice combination. Get your pita bread, you can make such great sandwiches. Oh, absolutely. You know, fill your pita and almost like a fajita, <laughs> fajita pita. It, everything was really delicious. The meats were perfectly cooked. Again, the char and the vegetables and the meat. And we kept going in trying the different flavored meats in there and they were all equally good. I, I, I would say the chicken was probably my favorite, but mm -hmm. they were all really good. And next, we had rotisserie chicken, $13.95. Now, I was not excited about rotisserie chicken. You know, rotisserie chickens, rotisserie chicken. However, this rotisserie chicken was really special. They dry marinate it, salt, pepper, and garlic. Very simple. Um, it's a half a chicken, but the, the flavors of the chicken, they were, it was so moist and tender, and the skin, I'm not even one to eat the skin, the crunch on it. Crispy. Crispy, delicious. This we got with a wheat pilaf, which was delicious. It was very buttery and had a great flavor profile. Very simple, but a great profile. And then it comes with ratatouille, which was delicious. Eggplant, red and green bell peppers, onions, tomatoes, garlic, and carrots. This, this stew of vegetables was just decadent. It was delicious. And then last but not desserts. least. Desserts. Desserts. Oh my goodness. Okay, so wipe your mind of any dessert you've ever had before because this one's going to top the cake here. I say that every episode, <laughs> but I really mean it. This one is called the Old World Dessert Sampler, $18. Folks, this is amazing. This has a sampler of, a, of about five or so different things. There's a farina cake, which is a cake that they use yogurt in and not butter. So it has an interesting taste. I, I'm not a, a huge fan of the farina cake, but it is good. Then they have a creamy baklava, which um, what they call is a wet baklava. So it's basically the same, which are used to the flavors with the, uh, the, the nuts and the honey and all that, but it's in a wet sauce. So it's, it's a little bit more moist. Then they have the traditional baklava, which is amazing. And everything's made fresh here. Fresh made. And then they do this, uh, and then they have a walnut cookie, which is very much like a, a butter cookie. You know, just a very simple, t uh, dusted with powdered sugar. And then the rice pudding. Mm. This rice pudding, folks, decadent, silky, creamy. They drizzle. The rice pudding has a drizzle of honey on it comes with strawberries and blueberries on it. I mean, this is this is really decadent, folks. You have to get the old world sample dessert plate. I mean, if nothing else, you must get that. Well, what are some of your favorites? Well, obviously the old world dessert sampler. <laughs> I'm a little excited about that still. Um, definitely the rotisserie chicken. Just It's a simple dish, but just so delicious. And I have to say the hot mezza. Uh -huh. I just, I love the crunch and the different, I like to taste different things that, at one time. Well, mine are a little bit more heavier than the dishes. Okay. I had the lamb shank. Okay. Oh, it's just so good, the gravy and yeah. everything. Then we had the pork tenderloin. That was one of my favorites because I've never seen, again, this cut of meat it's unique. in a restaurant. Very different. Mm -hmm. And the ultimate kebabs. I love kebabs. Yeah. And all their kebabs here were first class. Lots of flavor, juicy, tender, and everything just flowed together so well. And especially with pita bread. You could eat a loaf, 10 loaves of <laughs> pita bread if there's such a thing as a pita bread loaf, which there isn't, but you can eat a lot of them. So. Yeah, I think the food, the portions are really big, and it is a good value. I mean, it's a higher end restaurant, but the food is just so spot on. You right. just can't go wrong with anything here. We get the dessert sampler. <laughs> Well, folks, we spent our money, we <laughs> gained our weight for you. Now it's your turn to come on out here and try the two restaurants. You're not going to be disappointed. No way. Until next time, this is food critic Alan Borgen. And Trisha Jansen. Happy eating, everybody. Okay, now you can finish this. It's, okay. it's a take. Put your menu to down. To-go box. Put your, just put your head in. Here. Oh, yeah. come on. You're eating, you're eating like a woman. Put, do like you did before. Just stick your face in it. Eat it. No, that's pretty excellent. Let's dine out.
Closed captioning for the Let's Dine Out show provided by Holiday Cafe, your neighborhood diner with two locations in Ontario and Mr. D's Diner in Laverne. Ready to satisfy your hunger and budget? Let's Dine Out is made possible by support from Food for Life Baking Company, makers of over 60 organic, all-natural sprouted baked goods, as well as gluten-free and vegan products. Food for Life Baking Company, dedicated to better health since 1964. Foodforlife.com. Sanborn's Air Conditioning and Heating, providing installation, maintenance, and repair of heating and air conditioning systems for home and businesses throughout the Inland Empire. Sanborn's Air Conditioning and Heating, five-star comfort for four generations. Sanbornsac.com. And viewers like you, supporting local public television. Thank you.